Hey, welcome back to Mistake Man. So, in a previous video, I introduced my model of the USS Defiant from Deep Space Nine. And I explained everything I've done with this model up to this point, just to kind of catch everyone up um, so that we can kind of start doing a build series with what I have left to do on this. And one of the things I talked about in that video was the photo etching parts that I bought in as part of an aftermarket kit. Um, part of this uh, green strawberry aftermarket parts. It has some plastic parts and a couple of photo etch detail pieces, a couple of sheets of detail pieces. And so I was talking about some of those and some of those I had to uh, make a dark color. I had to like these uh, grills on the back of the warp engines. Um, that those were part of the photo etch kit and um, you know they wouldn't look right if they were just the the plain brass finish so they needed to be dark and i decided i didn't want to paint them because i wasn't confident that i could get a nice even coat of paint on there that wouldn't be all globby and thick and just uneven um, but i knew that it was possible to use certain kinds of chemicals to blacken brass and since that's what this photo etch material is made of um, i decided to give it a try i didn't know what chemicals were involved i know that there are products that you can buy that will do that for you and um, but i wanted to just i wanted to see if i could figure out what chemicals are involved in that process just to see just to explore if maybe a DIY option would make sense, or if it's better to just go ahead and go with the commercial products to, to do that blackening. So I did a little bit of research online and I set up some experiments to try and figure out which chemicals would I would need in order to uh, blacken the brass. Um, I tried alcohol, like isopropyl alcohol. I tried... Um, uh, acids like vinegar I tried acetone just you know like strong solvent type chemicals that I thought might react with the brass um, and I also thought from doing some research online that maybe ammonia was would also help as well so I tried windshield washer fluid none of that stuff did anything to the brass um, I tried salt like salt water um, I'd heard that the ammonia can do the trick, and so I had to find something. I tried actually just getting some ammonia from Walmart, that, but it had like other stuff in it, and it didn't actually do anything to it. Um, but I also had, if you're familiar with a product called Brasso, which is a brass cleaning substance. It's kind of like a paste, and it's got some like abrasive stuff in it, but it's also got really strong ammonia. At least it's, you know, that smell when you open the brasso, it smells really strongly of ammonia. And so I thought we had some of that. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll give it a try. And so I put it in the, the brasso, put just, you know, cut off little, little clips of this uh, flashing, this extra material out here and cleaned it up, cleaned off, make sure there wasn't any oils from fingerprints or anything on there and kind of sanded it a little bit just in case there was like a surface layer of oxidation. And I uh, put that in the Brasso and it did uh, start reacting with it. And so I thought, okay, that might be the trick. Um, but it didn't, it seemed like it didn't have a very strong reaction. So any, uh, some way along, somewhere along the way, I thought, okay, if it's the ammonia that's doing it, ammonia is a gas and that's what's coming off of that Brasso paste that makes it smell so strongly. So maybe if I suspend the brass above the surface of the brasso and then enclose it, you know, put it in a closed container so that the ammonia stays trapped inside, maybe the gas will react with it. And that totally worked. It, it worked really well. And once I kind of figured out the process of kind of suspending the parts over the surface of the Brasso paste and it really gave it a nice look to it. I decided to go ahead and go for it and it's got a nice dark color to it. So it turned out really good. 
I didn't take any video or even any photographs of the process of blackening the photo etch components for my Defiant. So I thought I would actually just, I've still got some pieces left over, some scraps and some parts that I'm not going to use. So I figured, well, let's, I'll just show you the process. I'll show you what I did to actually use the Brasso to blacken that. So with the Brasso here, like I said, this is normally for cleaning and polishing. It's got that critical ingredient, I think is the ammonia, which is what makes it hap makes it go black. So first thing I'm going to do here is I've got this piece here, which is, it goes on the underside of the model. It's intended to replace this section right here where the hole is to uh, make it look like the shuttle bay that was shown there in later seasons of Deep Space Nine, um, which is a great little detail that they give you the pieces for that, but I'm not gonna use that because I'm gonna be mounting this on a stand and with my lighting going through there, I need that hole there. So, so I'm not gonna end up using this piece and so I'm gonna use it as a demonstration. So the way this worked for me in the past was to suspend this stuff the parts above the Brasso and then let the ammonia gas that was coming off of it work its magic. Um, and the easiest way I found to do that was to just use this extra uh, sprue material to and, and fold it into a support to, that'll hold it above the, the Brasso paste. I'm just going to cut that off. And then I'll fold it. So let's grab some tweezers here. I'll leave myself enough room that it'll fold up above the brasso paste. I don't know, maybe that far. Just so it's out of it, but still close to it. Just folding myself a little, a little leg for it to stand on, right? All right, something like that. It doesn't have to be straight by any means. off those extra bits so they're not in the way and then something like that just enough to hold it then I'm going to place it inside of this jar let me see if that's actually going to fit in there okay so that's going to fit I'll have to be obviously more careful about how I lower it in there for the real deal actually I think I'll bend this little guy up, give myself a handle to lower it into there. There we go, because I don't want to just like blob it in there and ha I don't really want to get Brasso on the part itself, because I think that's going to give it some uneven blackening if I do that. So, all right, so that'll work. So the idea here is, I don't know if I need to shake this one. Let's take a look. So there, it's just kind of this like thick paste stuff. <gasps> oh, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. All right, so I just want to put enough in there. That is gonna give me a nice, yeah, I can already smell it. The stuff smells strong very strongly of ammonia. Kind of even that out a little bit. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Okay.
Okay, so that's suspended nicely. So let's seal that up. For one, to protect my nose, because the stuff smells strongly. And uh, mostly, most importantly, to keep the gas in there so it can do its thing. So I think I'm going to set up a time lapse so we can uh, watch the magic happen. I don't remember how long this takes, so I'll let you know when it's done. At the points where the brass submerges into the paste, you can immediately start seeing it turning a blue color and fog starting to build up on the sides. At the points there where the jar moves, that's actually where I've opened up the lid and lightly blew in fresh air. The idea was to maybe, you know, if it's oxidizing the brass, maybe it's running out of oxygen. And so I just introduced a little bit more about blowing in every few hours, but I don't know if that actually helped or hindered. It's hard to say. Not sure what all the variables are, but you can start to see the main part itself is starting to darken. The legs that are folded down have almost completely blackened and they're starting to turn blue. They tend to build up a kind of a bluish sludgy coating on them, which you'll see later. This whole process uh, took about 24 hours and you can see that it hasn't quite completed all the way here. It has been 24 hours since I started this process. So uh, let's open it up and take a closer look at what we've got here. So obviously it hasn't fully completed. Um, I really didn't want to take any longer than the 24 hours. Um, it's most of the way there. I think, I don't know, maybe six, eight more hours might do actually f finish the whole process, but this is good enough, at least for the demonstration purposes of what we're doing in this video here. Um, I think maybe if I had bent those tabs on the bottom so that this was just the part ended up being closer to the paste it might have gone faster as you can see the stuff down low is pretty much completely blackened it looks blue in the video well and it does in person as well um, but I found that uh, that once I rinse this off with some water that blue tint goes away and it's just a nice nice black color so I'll show you that in a minute but so I think if I'd maybe mounted a little bit closer it might have gone faster I don't know all the variables that factor into how this process works um, but anyway this is let's go ahead and uh, let's pull it out of here let's see if I can do this without bumping the camera too much I'll have to wash the brasso off. And then, like I said, it's got this kind of bluish tint to it. Um, obviously, where it was actually submerged in the brasso, it's got the bluish tint. But also, even the stuff that was above, like you can see on that, that bar there, was not submerged. But it's very blue. And it's got this, like, wrinkly, it's got this wrinkly coating on it but uh, we'll go wash that off with some water and I think you'll see it should just end up looking nice and black at least that's what happened that was my experience with the other parts so uh, let's go wash this off
right, so here's here it is after washing. And obviously there's there's still some crud on there. You still see that kind of bluish greenish tinge. There's still a layer of stuff on there. Um, I rubbed as much of it off as I could under the water with my fingers, um, but th that stuff will come off. It just takes a little bit more effort to do that. So I'm gonna try and do that with this paper towel here. It should come right off just with a little bit more scrubbing. Need to pull out a brush. Yeah, a little bit more of it's kind of come off at the edges there, but let's try. A little bit, not much. It's Okay, I scrubbed and scrubbed at that for a while, and it does come off, and underneath is this nice dark finish. Um, but it is a lot more difficult to remove than I remember it being. I tried, you know, just cleaning it with a brush, with paper, damp paper towels. I tried, like, some cut-off pieces of sprue, and that kind of helped, but still I had to push on it really hard, and... You can see I've managed to deform the plastic quite a bit. It was very, it's very difficult to remove that crust on that piece, but on the top half, it came off relatively easily, more or less with just my fingers under the running water, and then a little bit, uh, scrubbing a little bit harder with the paper towel got rid of the rest of that. Obviously, the stuff that's down inside those little etched uh, tacks, that's not coming out easily. But, and, and there's like one little stubborn spot right there. Um, that came off relatively easily. And as you can see, that finish, that black finish, it looks good. It's nice and smooth and doesn't get all marred up for me trying to remove. So like I said, I don't remember, it wasn't that hard to remove that crust last time. And I, th it's hard to know. There's so many variables, so many things that could affect how this process works, but I suspect that I did have to leave it in. I must have left it in longer. I honestly don't remember how much time it took to do this process last time, but I just kind of left it and it might've been for days. Um, I obviously would have had to leave this piece longer in order to get the full coating because there's still some brass color showing through there. So, and I think basically when I was done, when I pulled the parts out and cleaned them up last time, they all had that like wrinkly, uh, muddy stuff that was on that wrinkly paste that was on the outside and just like this part here just like this part here and that that was the easiest part to clean up and like I said last time all the parts were just coated in that stuff and so it was pretty easy to clean up there were a few stubborn spots last time but just a little bit of scrubbing with a, a brush and also like a little like a toothpick something that was wood that was soft enough that it's not going to mar the the black coating that we're going for but uh hard enough to pop that crust off of there so i just use like a toothpick you know last time was it was a really successful attempt for me and so that's why i wanted to kind of show you what i did here and say hey maybe you could do that if you want to give it a try but now after this like i don't know it's risky you it, might end up with something that's just got a crust on there it's too stubborn to maintain or too uh too stubborn to remove and you might end up ruining your parts so i think what i'll do is just to test out that hypothesis that maybe leaving it in longer and letting it develop that wrinkly sludge 
coating across the whole part. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do that. I'll leave it in and just let it go and watch it. It might take a couple days. I don't know how long it's going to take, but in the meantime, I guess I can't safely recommend you actually use this pro the Brasso process to blacken your brass. I had, like I said, I had a really good success with it when I did it, but maybe I just got lucky. But at this point, after trying to clean that up and the amount of force I had to apply and deforming the parts, you know, I'd be pretty upset if these were my actual real parts that I wanted to use. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say at this point, don't recommend doing this, but I'll give you an update after I let it sit for longer. All right, so that's the process that I took in order to use the Brasso to blacken the parts. And like I said, it worked really well for me when I did it, although during this demonstration hasn't worked quite as well. And so not sure that I'd be confident recommending other people try that at this stage. I will give you an update down the road after I finish running the experiment. Here is kind of just a, a quick update. It's a little hard to see with got a different lighting setup than I had earlier. So the blackening has continued. Um, but it's still not complete. There's still some brass color that I can see in there. Um, but it does seem to have taken away some of that green crud. And it's building up some more of that uh, wrinkly sludge layer. So that's that's good, I think. So we'll give that adequate time. And I'll let you know how it goes and how much time it ends up taking to complete that process. But one last thing I did want to mention that I haven't mentioned up to this point. I did use that process to blacken the brass components. But then I also wanted to make sure that um, in order to preserve that finish so that it wouldn't get scratched or scuffed down the road as I work with it. And also wasn't sure if further exposure to oxygen in the atmosphere would continue to change the finish, whether it would make it darker, make it lighter, make it do something entirely different. So I wanted to just kind of stop any of that potential from happening. And so I did decide to go ahead and clear coat these components. All right, so this is what I clear coated it with, just a Tamiya acrylic line X22 clear. And I just thinned out a little bit with some of the Tamiya thinner and uh, ran it through my airbrush and airbrushed over these uh, this these grill parts on the warp engines. Um, I, I did that before I installed the grills in, and it turned out fine. Um, obviously, it kind of goes against my initial concern of not wanting to paint it because I was afraid it would glop on and look uneven. Um, and, you know, I guess that still might have been the case if I had put enough coats of paint to make it look the right color and then clear coat it afterwards. Um, but the, the clear coating itself didn't do anything noticeable to the, the, the final finish. I mean, it's a little glossier than it was, but that's fine. In the future, if I had to do that, I might just go ahead and go with a, a product that's intended to do that. One of those brass black, brass blackening products. Um, but it was a, a fun, interesting experiment to try and figure out how to do that. Uh, I'll probably, I'll sure I'll do more photo etch stuff and, if it needs to be blackened, I'll try one of those products. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I've got an update on that uh, photo etch part that I put back in the Brasso. Just, just to see how long it would take to fully blacken. And as of now, it's been back in here for 31 additional hours. And can see it's definitely gone all the way now. It's got kind of like a bluish liquid that's developed on there. You can kind of see it dripping there. So it doesn't quite look the same as it did before with that like wrinkly layer of, of sludgy stuff. Um, there we go, there's some better light. And it almost looks kind of greenish, like 
in the sense that maybe there's still some brass color shining through. So I don't know. I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to pull this out and go rinse it off with some water. I'm not going to film that because I want to do it pretty quickly. Um, just because I'm starting to suspect that maybe having exposure to air is what's making it more difficult to remove that like crusty layer that builds up on there. Although, I don't know, maybe the crusty layer is not there now. But anyway, I'll, I'll go rinse it off and bring it back and show you what it looks like. All right. So I've cleaned it off. As you can see, there's still still a layer of that uh, greenish crud on there. So, I mean, the whole part has been, well, I don't know if blackened is really the right word, but it's had its color changed anyway. I mean, it does have a, a dark finish to it, but it's not like a nice, smooth, even finish anymore. If you can, yeah, and you can see it's kind of bubbly and bumpy looking. Does not look good. So, yeah, I have to say at this point, I couldn't recommend doing this method to blacken your photo etch parts. I, you know, the when I tried it on the parts for my actual model, it worked great. I had great results, but I don't remember exactly what I did or what I did different this time, uh, you know, to say what works and what doesn't. So, yeah, I don't think I'll be doing this again because, yeah, that's just, it's too risky. You end up ruining your parts just to, I don't know. Yeah, it was an interesting experiment. And uh, now we know it is possible, but don't know what the variables are that make it work. It's also interesting that, like, some of the parts that were submerged in the brass paste itself really didn't change color. So that just really, really supports the hypothesis that it's the gas coming off the, that is actually acting on the the brass. I'm not a chemist, and I don't I don't know exactly what's happening here. I don't know if this is oxidation or some other kind of reaction, but yeah, that little leg is barely hanging on. So. Anyway, there's our update. Interesting process. Potential to work, but probably too risky. That wraps up my adventures in learning how to blacken this brass. And uh, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching.